I am back again, guys. Welcome to a special edition of Tea Time with Dr. Yabo on a Tuesday afternoon. Okay, on a Tuesday afternoon. You guys know that sometimes I do my tea times. Hi, Motivation MD. Hi, hi, Precious. You guys are the first to join my tea time. You guys know sometimes I do have to do my tea time on a weekday because it's not all my guest speakers that have time on Sundays. So I'm glad that you guys are flexible and you're here with me today. So yes, I am back. I know I was just live to give you guys some updates, but I'm back um, with my amazing guest, Patrice Washington. I'm sure a lot of you already follow her. I have known about Patrice for a while. I know she talks a lot about purpose and money. She talks a lot about a lot of the things that I believe in as well. And I feel so humbled and just so happy that she's here with me today because I know she is busy and she's here. So I'm going to bring her right on. Okay, Patrice, welcome. Seek Wisdom PCW. I'm going to have to pin Seek Wisdom PCW. I'm going to have to... Hi, Patrice. Hi. Hi. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. I just I'm made... A... I could be ready. I went and made tea just for you, just to make yeah. sure I'm ready to go. <laughs> what does it say? What does it say on your mug? It says, I am the CEO of my life. Yes. Yes. yes yes amen to that guys you see even the mug you drink from should reflect what you believe right <laughs> yeah yeah it should reflect what you believe all my mugs have meaning this one was my daughter's gave it to me it says dear mom i love you <laughs> yeah Th this one says cancun I uh oh oh there there you go. And she called, as soon as I said my daughter's, my phone rang, and that was my older daughter calling. <laughs> but she would just have. Yeah, that's so funny. But welcome, Patrice. I admire you a lot. I'm one of your secret admirers. Yeah. Really? Yes. Why yeah. Oh, I want to try. And I, I first listened to you somewhere or read about you somewhere about five years ago. And wow. yeah, it's been a while and I don't remember where it was. But since then, I've, I, and I'm not subscribed to your podcast. Everybody knows that I'm not a podcast person. I'm a very visual person. I prefer listening to people while I see their face. So I don't, I've tried catching on to podcasts and I just can't. But I, I love what you, what you teach because you teach about making money in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's simple as that. You basically teach us all how to make money with a purpose. And I know that purpose is a word that is overused. I kind of understood that with my last guest. I don't know if you've watched my, and we're going to get into it, but I like, I do sometimes talk a lot, but my last tea time with uh, Mrs. Awoshika, if you have time later on, please watch that one hour. She's another phenomenal, phenomenal lady like you. And she said, purpose is a word that is overused. And sometimes we feel like it's this large, big thing out there you know, which is, it's not, it's just very simple. But I love what you do that you teach us about purpose and you teach us about making money from our purpose. And we're all ready to learn from you today. Yes. So welcome, Patrice. <laughs> welcome. I have to say, I do agree with that. I agree with the idea that purpose is so like overused and it's a word that I've been using for so many years. Like I look back at some of my Facebook memories and the things that I say about purpose today, I was saying in 2010. So it wasn't like a, you know, like, oh, it's a buzzword. It's 2020, 2021. Let's talk about it. It's something that I truly um, believe in. I've always been a big reader of Proverbs and just purpose and wisdom and all that stuff have always fascinated me, the idea of it. But, and I agree we talk about it in a way so often that makes it seem like something out over yonder. Like when I go find my purpose, when I get over the mountain, right? And, you know, when the skies open, 
and the heavens allow for my purpose to fall from the sky, then I'll do the thing. And it's like purpose is not hiding from you. It's just not as grand as we try to make it. It is so simple. Like you were already born to do the thing that you were called to do. You were already born with it. It's about embracing it. It's not about trying to force going to find it. It's not under the bed. It's not around the corner. It's, it's not ducking from you. It is literally right here. But so many times, uh, you know, we, we don't recognize that we're already in purpose. Purpose evolves. So as we go through life and we're exposed to new things and new people and new opportunities, it's just going to keep adding new layers. But the core of who we are and what we should be doing, many of us, it, it's been that thing that you were doing when you were a little kid. Like you're already doing it. Now you just older and hopefully wiser and now you can just expand upon it but it's not the the work that i do i've been doing since i was a child i've been doing since i, well, I was a child i was this way in first grade when you know something teach your friends that's what my first grade teacher taught me and she understood my ability to communicate well and to help others and break things down that felt very hard i don't know what was so hard in first grade but people were struggling girl in first grade and my my first grade teacher allowed me to use my gifts to help others in the class and i would just walk around and talk to people and go no like no it doesn't have to be that hard let me make it simpler for you that's who i was in first grade and it's who i've been my whole life and so the fact that i uh you know started my career with teaching people around personal finance and those things it was just attaching that to something but who i was at my core has always been the same so i've always been in purpose hmm. this is why i love the women that i bring on on my on my tea time with me because we hadn't even started talking and you just picked it saying. <laughs> you haven't asked one question but i just felt like i had to say that but you just picked it up. And Patrice, this is something, and I love that flow. This is something that I, can you talk to the women out there that it's really not that hard to do what you love. It's really not that hard to come live and speak. There's so many women that are terrified of what we do. And I use myself as an example that I was the shyest person before. I could, I've always been a passionate person. I've always been passionate. If I see I'm going to do something, I'll do it. If I, you know, I know my limitations. I'm not going to say I'm going to count, climb the highest mountain because I'm scared of heights. But when it comes to like business and strategy or studying for an exam or getting goals done, once I say I'm going to do it, I will do it and I'll see it to success. But when it comes to showing my face and talking, I was terrified of it. But I had to put myself out there because how am I going to get my message and my mission across? So what you just did now, what, how you just, you know, how we just flowed. I was talking, I hadn't even introduced you and you just picked it up from there. Can you explain to women how easy that can be that's something you know and you're passionate about you can just come and speak about it well that's the thing it's what you know right i don't try to get up here and pretend to know all the things if you start asking me about cryptocurrency this conversation is going to fall flat i don't know all the things about cryptocurrency right so i tend to lean into the things that i know and i and i believe that you speak what you truly believe the reason that it comes so effortlessly to me, what I speak about is because this is what I believe. And I believe it so strongly that I don't have a problem getting on a mountaintop and saying, this is what I believe. When you are not certain yet of what you believe and how you should go about sharing that in the marketplace, it, it, it creates that imposter syndrome, right? Where you're like, well, I don't have the right words. I need to have more degrees and more certifications. And I need to read 16 more books before I even give my thoughts. No, like whatever you think about a subject, whether it falls in alignment with what everybody else is saying or not, if you believe it, that's enough. Like there's enough people saying crazy. We see, we see people saying the craziest things out there, but you know what? They are loud and proud because they believe it. 
And you should have that level of conviction about what you believe. Yes. I believe the mantra chase purpose not money you can argue with me about it all day matter of fact don't try because i'm not going to argue i believe in the mantra chase purpose not money i've seen it too much in my life i've seen how many times i chose purpose over money and then more money came as a result plus i was doing something that i was fulfilled with i've seen it i've lived it i've experienced it i've taught it to people they have lived it they've seen it they experienced it so no matter where I am or what I'm talking about, you're not going to get me to shut up about it. And that's the thing. What do you really believe? What do you wish more people out there knew to be the truth? You can't hope and pray that somebody else is going to deliver the message. At some point, you have to say, let me get over myself. Let me get over my limiting beliefs. Let me go work through my childhood trauma. Because for many of us, we don't want to be seen because somebody told us that, you know, we shouldn't be seen or because we have these preconceived notions about what we look like or what are people's perception. Or, you know, we got all this stuff. So then us here when really you have something so valuable to say and it's your responsibility, it's your duty, like to get out of your own way and get out of the way of the people you're supposed to serve and find the words. You become more articulate in it the more you say it. But it's not you're not going to come out the gate perfect. And I still don't speak perfectly. I don't care to. This is not TV. This is real life. Like, I'm not an actress. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not an actress. So it's not about being perfect and never saying um and never messing up a word or having the right diction and using all the big words and making sure your vocabulary is so expansive. It's like, dude, show your heart. What do you believe? Share your heart. The people who are supposed to hear your message, they will receive it. Period. Ah. <sighs> Oh my goodness, Patrice, I love you even more. I love you. <laughs> no, no. Everything you just said, people need to just keep listening to it and replay. We want to be perfect as women. My nose is too big. And then my African sisters, my nose is too big. No, not even that. I sound Nigerian. My accent, well, I, and, I, and then I tell them, my accent is Nigerian. I've been in the States. I left Nigeria when I was 23. I'm 51 years old. My accent is the same. <laughs> Come My on. Accent, no. Can we get into the here? I said, Come on, 51. You look amazing. Let's get I'm, into the end. Patrice, Patrice, it's because I go to bed and I sleep at night. I don't, I sleep. Me too. Like, I can take a nap anytime during the day because I just commit my life into God's hands. Yes, I have been through a lot. That's a topic for another day. I went through a divorce. I have lost both my parents, even though they were older. I lost a sister to cancer. I have been through life. I have. But why do I stay standing and full of excitement? Because I'm God's child. Because I'm God's child. This is what I tell people. And because I found my purpose and I wake up every day wanting to live it. Yeah. So why do I need to worry about anything but just to go to sleep and snore? And I mean, my husband, I got remarried last year at the age of 50. I was divorced for 10 years. My husband laughs at me when I, he's like, you can sleep on water. I'm like, yeah, because I don't, my, I just put all my worries in God's hands. What else can happen in life? No, Ooh. seriously. What yeah. else can happen in life? So women don't sleep and then they say they're aging and they're looking for some plastic surgery fix. Well, find your purpose. Find your gifts and talents. Start to live a meaningful life. Start to show up knowing that there's people waiting for you mm -hmm. to survive. Some mm -hmm. people do. They need me just to survive. I have learned that over and over and over in my life, in all my teachings. So anyway... Yeah. I sleep. When people ask me, how do you look young? I tell them it's sleep. Because yeah. women, if women are sleeping three hours a night. Well, 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 before, I know you have questions for me about financial freedom and financial 
independence. But let's let's just start here. The yes. first at redefining wealth is the fit pillar. And we talk about you need to be physically and mentally well. Before you start this chase of money and building wealth, there is no wealth building without well-being. So you hit it on the head because we need to go to sleep. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to move our bodies. We need to drink water. We need to eat produce and be productive. Like we need those things in order to fuel what we've been called to do in the marketplace. And you're right. So many of us have subscribed to this idea that I need to just be on my hustle and grind. I need to be up all night. I go to sleep at 3 a.m. I wake up at 6 and then we want to act like, you know, we're wearing be exhaustion as a badge of honor. That's not honorable. It's foolish. And I know I've had mentors that are like, you can sleep when you're dead. No, well, I'm asleep then too. No. I'm asleep now and I'm asleep then. But all of the books that you're trying to read, all of the podcasts you may be listening to, all of the courses, none of that really gets solidified in your brain until you go to sleep. All of the repair that your body needs from all of the breakdowns that happen throughout the day, none of that happens until you go to sleep. Like rest and recovery is the best thing for like every area of your life. So I am with you and I can tell you unequivocally, I look younger today than I did probably 15 years ago. Me too. I was running a seven figure business. Yes. <laughs> Why my husband and I drove matching Range Rovers. I had all the thing and all the things, and I was consistently chasing bigger and better and more and more and more. And I was going to my office early and I was leaving late. And I was running myself ragged all over Southern California trying to do all the things. And did I make money? Yes. Was it sustainable? No. Was it sustainable? No, it was not. I neglected relationships. I neglected my environment. I neglected my spirituality at different times. I totally negated what I was being called to do in the marketplace because I was chasing money. I wasn't listening for what God wanted me to do in that season. And everything came crashing down. And it wasn't until I got humbled severely in 2009 that as God was like rebuilding me, all of these things that I now call the six pillars of wealth like came to the forefront. And so I'm at a space in my life where no, you're not gonna exhaust me. You're not gonna run me ragged. No, I'm not staying up all night. No, I'm not, no, 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 no. My no game is so strong because I have to say yes to the things that I know allow me to be the woman who I feel I'm called to be. And exhausting myself and not sleeping at night and run, no, no, no. I don't even work on Wednesdays, doctor. I don't work on Wednesdays. I have to build in time in the middle of the week for rest and recovery and to be still and to listen and to have thinking time. We're so busy on the go, 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 go. And then we want a quick financial fix. We can talk to them about anything regarding finances. If your health and your relationships and your environment and every other place of your life is all jacked up, you don't even have the mind to receive what I know you want to ask me. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to be quiet now. <laughs> I'm going to be quiet now. <sighs> I don't even know where to start from or where to pick this up from because women want to make money. They're bogged down with bad dating, bad relationships. They're chasing men who are not good for them. They have not figured out what they want to do in life. They're sleeping three hours. They're drinking sodas every day. They, have, they, they don't exercise. It's just, it's a mess. And then they want to make money. This is why I tell them that my coaching is holistic. I just did a video before this, to a, a live, to remind them to come and join us. And I said, if you're coming to sign up for my entrepreneurship coaching, and you don't want me to talk about your health and your wellness, you don't want me to talk about your dating and your relationship life, I'm not the coach for you. Ooh, yeah. Not the coach for you. Because you cannot make that money or sustain it like you said. Yes, you may make the money, but that money may make you sick. That money may eventually kill you. Mind my brutal words. 
Because if you're not sleeping, you're not exercising, you're not minimizing stress, you're not laughing. Do you know mm -hmm. how many don't laugh? And I've been through it. There was a season that I wasn't laughing. <laughs> I, I just, there was nothing to laugh about. Yeah. And uh, in, my daughter still remind me that, mommy, your 30s, you look so old. I'm like, I know I looked old. But after I got rid of all that toxicity, I started to age backwards. Mm, so I, good. Yeah, I wasn't laughing. I wasn't smiling. I didn't even notice the sunset. And one day after my divorce, several months after, I was taking a walk and I looked up and I said, Iyabo, you have not actually noticed the sunset for years. Mm. And I hadn't. I would be driving at night, but because I'm all into my own stress and into life and everything, I didn't even take time to look at the sky. I was crying that night. I remember that night very well. I looked up at the sky and I'm like, I haven't even noticed the simplicity of nature in many, many months. So many women are in that. And mm -hmm. Patrice, we are here to help. I know we came to talk about financial freedom, but God wanted us to take it this way. And that's what yeah. we're listening to. Yeah, because we can tell you guys, well, you know, create your brand, come and speak live and do this marketing and that. But if you're not taking, of your, taking care of your mind, your body and spirit, and you're not taking care to choose who, who you want as your husband, as your mm -hmm. true partner, <laughs> as your true life partner, and you just get picked rather than you picking. Because a lot of you women just want a man. So you just want a man that will pick you. But do you want him or you just want to be called Mrs.? Because Dr. Yabo is a Mrs. Patrice is a Mrs. Are you actually thinking about, is this man going to share in the dream that I have for my life? The Ooh. way that I chose my husband this time at the age of 50 was not how I chose my husband when I started dating him at the age of 17. Yes. Dr. Yabo, wait a minute. You can't just skate past that. <laughs> Wait a minute. You can't you cannot just skate past that. Not only are they enrolled in the vision that you have for your life, but do they see more in you than you see in yourself at different points? Because they have to be able to see more in you than you see in yourself. My husband used to tell me when we were dating, I feel like you should be on the news. And I was not into journalism. And I would go, what are he talking about? <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, okay, what are you talking about? I was 21, 22 years old, never in my mind thinking that my career would lead me to being on the news. Some days I'm on different stations. I do satellite media tours. I'll do 25 interviews back to back all over the country. I know. I see spoke that into my life over and over again in my early 20s we had no idea and when it started to happen i'm like you really spoke that up he's like i always saw it in you and we would go back and forth in these seasons where we would have to say to each other i see more in you than you see in yourself if you don't have somebody that you can have that type of you know back and forth with that then again right again you can build it all but when you're down can they help bring it up can they help bring you up can they bring you oh. out of it? or does the whole ship just go down because that's going to impact your your ability to create a legacy as well who you choose to partner with period i want to respect your time i know we planned on 30 minutes uh, do we <laughs> finish at two no i i, I do i have an interview i do okay. Okay. Oh my gosh, but I love talking to you. We have to do this again. again. So, so then I know you can blot it out loud in five minutes though. So then we, we've said it, right? Relationships, health and wellness. So then the money part. There are many mm -hmm. women out there that don't want to get into this online space. I want to make money online. I want to make money online. COVID has taught us that, yes, entrepreneurship is the way to go. I thank God that I have my businesses in this COVID time. Otherwise, I may have been let go. So can you wrap it all around for women, especially I want to help those women 
who say they don't have money. And I believe a lot of my African sisters want to get into the online space. They say they don't have money. And this is why I've created my membership coaching, which we'll talk about another time. But what can women start to do now to make money in the online space? I mean, this is a great example. It, we talked about it earlier where we don't want to go live. We don't want to show up. We don't want to share. We don't want to tell the story. I think the first thing is getting clarity, right, around who are you called to serve and, and talking to those people. The first step before anyone is going to open up their wallet to you, how do you plan on serving them? Like, what is the result that you want to create? And how can you start to give value before you put your hand out? Showing up live, giving content, curating an environment, everything that you're doing just right here on Instagram is free. This doesn't cost any money. Before I started to um, actually create group coaching programs and those types of things, I used to do, t I used to do the free teleseminar. So we didn't even have Instagram, right? Everybody would dial into a free conference call line. And I would teach for like an hour and pour into people. And they go, people would send me emails. How can I bless you? I feel like I need to sow a seed. Like mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting everything you gave. And people would sow in, right? Then I start making those a paid thing. So small amounts, $27 to join this. And I'll also email you a workbook or some worksheets. But it started with, again, when you know something, you have a responsibility to share make someone else's journey easier. It's not about you having to be a perfect 10. But if you, if I died today, Dr. Yoba, and I was a five, my goal was to teach one through fours how to make their journey easier, how to make their path easier to redefining wealth for themselves, right? You can start to do that, but by just giving value where you are. Because the clarity comes in the doing. When you start to just give the value, you'll be introduced to new ways, to new methods of marketing, to new people. You'll be exposed to so many things that will guide you in the next direction. But if you never start, if you never start, if you never hit go live, if you never push publish on the blog, if you never send the email to the list, if you never tried to create a list, then what are we working from? Absolutely nothing. And I said this on a live earlier. I said, God knows what you're, what you're waiting on when he sees what you're working on. Yes. God knows what you're waiting on when he sees what you're working on. When you're sitting there like, well, when it all comes together, then I guess I'll move. Well, you're going to be sitting and nothing going to be moving. Faith without works is dead. What do you have and what are you willing to contribute? What are you willing to put out there? What are you willing to give God to bless. Like we all have something that we can give God to bless. And are you okay with understanding that an audience of one is still an audience? When I was yes. doing those calls, there wasn't thousands of people. There weren't thousands of people. A lot of what I say today has not changed. This is what I, who I am. This is what I believe. This is what I've believed for years. But eight years ago, I was saying this to 30 people. And now I can say it to 3,000. The only thing is the numbers have gotten bigger because I stay consistent and I stay true to the call. God keep, when God calls, I keep moving in obedience, not in perfection, in obedience, hmm. right? And so when we're like, well, I don't have the money. Instagram is free. Facebook is free. A lot of the apps that you use to start building an email list, they're free or they're very low cost. It's not, I don't have the money. It's what do I have? You asking the wrong questions. It's not, well, I don't have the money. What am I supposed to do with no money? It's, this is where I'm right now. What can I do with what I have today? Cool. I'm going to go do that. That's it. Every, all of us started from somewhere. Yes. 30 seconds, um, uh, Patrice. Can you let people know that they can enjoy what they're doing to make money? There's many people on social media who say, you know, mind my words, BS. Oh, no, you cannot. You can't make money from something you love. All these people that are telling you you can love what you do. Oh, there are many. Can you please break that myth right now for people? And we'll end here. You should love what you do day in and day out because if you don't that'll be the number one thing that leads you to financial mismanagement 
lack of fulfillment is always going to like navigate your path to financial mismanagement. Not only should you do work that you love, I like, I truly believe, and I've been through seasons where it wasn't that everything that I did all day long, right, was something that I loved, but I always refused. This is where Chase Purpose Not Money comes in. I refused to get so tied in to work that I hated if it would take me away from doing something I loved. And there was a point where I did work that I didn't necessarily enjoy, but I volunteered every additional minute that I had so that I could be inundated with the work that I love. I was a volunteer at a financial education nonprofit in Atlanta in 2010. In 2011, they hired me on full time because I was working somewhere I had no business working, but I did what I needed to do, right, in that season. Working in that environment for less than what I was really worth, because we also get caught up in that. I was working for less than I was worth, but what I was exposed to was invaluable. And what I got to do every day fulfilled me so much that it just kept me chasing purpose. It kept me in this space of like, wow, if I can help people have these type of aha moments, I just want to do this. And it, so it kept navigating my path down these different opportunities until I could do it full time on my own, um, like a year and a half or so into that experience. I was able to leave and do it on my own, but I was armed and equipped, right? Like, but, but I started as a volunteer. That was free. That was free. I gave my gift away for free. And they, I mean, but what I got back, the fulfillment, the joy, the peace, the contentment. And then once I realized, oh my gosh, this is a thing. I could get paid doing this. I never looked back. And I left there 2012, January, no, December 2012, I left. And I've been on my own solely since then. So you should do work that you love. You should do work that fills you up. You should do work that you are absolutely positively proud of and that you know is completely in alignment with what you're being called to do. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. This is so good for having me. This, this was wonderful. I'd love to do this again. I know you're busy, so you tell me when you're free. Because yeah, I am you. We can do it again. We can finish yeah. up and get your questions. <laughs> and I, won't, yeah. I won't keep yeah. talking. This was more than enough. This was more than enough. And people know how to reach you. So, you know, just follow Patrice, guys. Those of you who are my people here, follow Patrice so you can learn more about, of what she does. Thanks, Patrice. Let's do it again. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>